Yeah, and uh, thanks everyone for, for turning up today. Um, as Abby introduced, I'm Mark Purcell. Um, I'm with uh, Zero Emissions Noosa. And uh, just a little about Zero Emissions Noosa, it's a, it's a not-for-profit uh, community organisation and it's really focusing on um, uh, the advantages and the benefits of reducing um, the, the emissions in the, in the Noosa Shire. And, um, so what we're doing here, this is part of what we do, um, is a whole bunch of community engagement sessions. And uh, I'm running a project within Zen um, called Rewiring Noosa. And, uh, and what, why am I doing this? Where have I come from? Um, I electrified my own house here at Noosa and I was just blown away um, by the benefits of electrification. I just was, I had no idea how, how good it was going to be and, uh, and what it did for my household and my family. And so I've now uh, joined Zero Emissions Noosa and I want to start doing this for the community because I think there's real benefits here. And so as we step through the presentation today, I'd ask each one of you here in the room, um, including the regular Zen people, um, to think about your own circumstances, think about your own household, think about some of the things that I've done to my house and think about, well, is that applicable to, my, to, to your house? Um, are there things that you could do here? Are there benefits that you could get um, in your household? And it's really about trying to identify um, benefits and, and help people, people, people go on this journey. Um, so that's a little bit about Zen, what we do. Um, we have got a great website. There's a lot of resources on this website. There's a lot of the other projects that Zero Emissions Noosa do on the website. And, uh, and some of the other things and some of the other people that are going to support me today. Um, we've got Tony, who's running our expo, um, which we're running next year. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the expo. And in fact, we'd like to get some feedback from you, the community. What would you like to see in the expo? And uh, Tony will talk about that. Um, we've got Gary, um, another Zen member, and, uh, and he's going to take us through some of this gear that we have at the front here. Um, these are actually home electrification kits that you can borrow from the library. Um, so Noosa Council have gone out and purchased these home electrification kits. You can borrow them yourselves, you can take them home. Gary's had it for a week or something back at his place. Um, Gary had a few oh wow moments um, with, 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 with these bits of equipment, which is really interesting because Gary works in this sector. And, uh, and so, yeah, it's really enlightening what, what, what actually can come up and uh, come, come to fruition when you, when you, when you, when you do things. And, uh, and then another colleague of ours, John, um, who's not here yet, he's actually driving down from Brisbane. He set up a similar organisation in his part of Brisbane um, called Electrify 4517, I think it is, which is his postcode. And he's going to talk a little bit about some of his experiences. So we're going to sort of, I guess, uh, co hopefully cover the topic in a, in a few areas. I would like to make this interactive, so if people do have questions or bits and pieces, um, feel free to, uh, to, 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 to jump in. So what are we talking about? We're talking about electrifying everything. And uh, hopefully by the end of my presentation, you'll actually have an understanding around the benefits of electrifying everything. And as I said, think about your own circumstances. Think about your own house, your own business. Why might you want to electrify your own, your own house, your own business? This, this picture up the, the right here, this is what good looks like. These are some of the technologies that we're going to talk about today. And uh, some of you may have some of those technologies already. Um, rooftop solar in particular, um, we've got a very strong take up in, in Queensland, in Noosa, something like 50% of the houses in Noosa have residential solar. Um, we do live in Queensland, the Sunshine State, um, so it makes a lot of sense. Come on in, there you go. That's right, yeah. Um, so yeah, so solar certainly makes a lot of sense. We're going to talk about some of the other things you can do, maybe to augment or, or in addition to your, to your solar system. And, uh, and really try and uh, focus on that. One of the things, and, and this is uh, one of our partner organisations, Rewiring Australia, put together this, uh, this presentation. And Saul Griffiths is, the, is their founder. Um, he's done a lot of work in the US, uh, I think called the Inflation Reduction Act. He got a trillion dollars out of the US government uh, for energy transition. He's now trying to do a similar thing here in Australia. He lives in Wollongong. He's set up a community down in Wollongong, called Electrify 2515, which is his postcode. And we're trying to mirror that up here in up here in Noosa, in Noosa Shire. And so we'll talk about some of the some of the benefits, and I'll talk about what I've done myself uh, as we as we go on the way. So the headline piece, and we put this in the blurb, is that the best way to run your house in Noosa um, is to electrify everything. Um, to have electric appliances and cars um, running your household. And you can see the cost comparison there, the gas and petrol home, and this is really an average running cost, about five thousand dollars a year. Um, a fully electrified home, a, a 
about eighteen hundred dollars a year. Um, so you can see that the cost of running an electrified home is 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 actually half of a, of, of a gas and, and, and fossil fuel home. And as I mentioned, we're going to start talking about some of the various technologies. Um, I can actually attest to those uh, to those to those values. Uh, myself in my household, I'm actually saving about ten thousand dollars a year because I've electrified my household. Um, I, my household has been net zero for the last two years. I'm still connected to the grid, and uh, and I'm net zero not only in terms of my emissions but also in terms of my costs. Uh, I get actually get a credit from the electric company every bill. Um, so I'm net zero in terms of carbon emissions. I'm also net zero in terms of uh, in terms of finance. Well, I'm, I'm in credit in terms of finance. And then the bottom line there, you can see the energy emissions. How much um, CO2 equivalent. Um, the, uh, the gas and petrol home releases versus uh, the energy emissions. So the two key takeaways here is there's is, is huge financial savings to be had by transitioning to all electric, but then there's also some additional benefits. There's health benefits, you're not burning carcinogenic products in your household, and there's the environmental benefits of not, uh, not actually running, um, um, yet yeah, burning, burning fossil fuels. A few pop-ups. Yeah, so um, these are the greenhouse gas emissions that we have in Australia. Um, the majority of them come from our energy, and that's why we're really focusing on energy and, and, and electrification and, uh, and, and, and the machines that, are, that actually do that. And then if we dive into the energy um, piece, 60% um, of that energy is from domestic consumption, uh, the households and the businesses, and uh, the other 40% of that, uh, of that uh, emissions is, is really what we export, the, the, the uh, the gas and other things that we export out of this country. So we're going to focus very much in on the domestic side of it. And as you can see here, the largest portion of domestic emissions are our households, followed by our businesses. And so if you're running a business or you've got a household, you really are um, one, of the, one of the larger contributors to our emissions. And, uh, and so that's why the opportunity to electrify your household, electrify your business actually has major advantages uh, in terms of this journey that we're, that we're taking. Now, we're not suggesting you need to electri electrify everything uh, this week or this month. Um, we can have a very graduated process and a step process. And as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm sure a few of you here have solar. You've actually taken the first step. And, uh, and what I'd like to outline for you today is some sort of second and third steps that you might wanna, you might wanna think about. So all these emissions from our households come from the energy um, that, that we, we use in our daily lives. So the petrol cars, the gas heaters, the gas water heaters, gas stoves, um, and the fossil fuel power plants that, that supply most of Australia's grid network. Um, my house here in Noosa, I moved up here two years ago. Um, I have bottled gas um, sitting, sitting on my property. And uh, every, every couple of months, I bring up L gas, and they come out, and they bring out another bottle of gas. And I had a gas hot water system, and I had a gas cooktop in my kitchen. And I had my gas, my gas plumbing through to my, through to my barbecue. So I, my household was very much part of this. I had a very modest uh, solar system. I uh, didn't have batteries. Um, I did have an electric car. And so I'm basically going to sort of talk about my experience and see how that relates to uh, what, what may or may not be, be, be relevant for you. So this is the solution, and this is what my, in fact, this is what my household looks like, even down to the dog uh, on, the, on the side there. Um, I've got the hot pump, the, the heat pump, hot water system. I've got heat pumps for my heating and cooling in my household. I've got solar. I've got um, the induction cooktop on my, uh, on, in my kitchen. In fact, that went in last month, so that was my last gas appliance that I got rid of. Um, I've got rid of the, I've got an electric car. In fact, I had an electric car. My wife had a petrol car. She was borrowing the electric car all the time. We're now a two electric car family because we don't, we don't miss not going to service stations and things like that. And I've got the home battery. That's fun, I do also have the grid connection. Now, a lot of people think, oh, if you electrify everything, you have to go off the grid. It's absolutely not the case. You can still very much, and in fact, in, many, in most cases, it's almost recommended that you stay connected to the grid. And what we're seeing with the grid is the grid overall is being um, transformed um, to more renewable energy and less dependency on fossil fuels. And, uh, and so what we're seeing is more solar, uh, some, some hydro in, in Queensland, not a lot of wind in Queensland, but wind in other, other places, potentially some wind coming online in Queensland. And having those different sources of renewable energy for the electricity grid is really important because then you're not just relying on the sun shining, 
you can actually get a bit of diversity and diversification from how that, how that looks around. So in Australia, we have access to the cheapest whole home energy in the world, our rooftop solar. And, uh, and these are the prices. Um, so you can see here the grid electricity price, 28 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, I don't know how much it, uh, and, and how often you guys look at your electricity bills. They are very complex and complicated activities. Here in South Queensland, the default market offer, if you just sign up with a default electricity plan, this year you're actually paying 42 cents a kilowatt hour. So it's really expensive. And you can get discounts on that. And, and as I said here, the Australian average is 28 cents. Um, if you put solar on your house, or if you've already put solar on your house, the average cost of your solar energy over its lifetime is 3 cents a kilowatt hour. So you can see there already, just by putting solar on and adopting solar, you make massive savings over the, over the lifetime. Most solar systems are supposed to last 25 years. Oh, my job, can you? Come on in. Um, so yeah, so massive, uh, yeah, okay, well let's just keep going. Yeah, so as I mentioned, solar, you can already see a massive reduction in, in prices from solar, and this is why many of you in the room have probably already gone there. But if you haven't been down the solar route, um, have a look at it. I sort of looked at solar, um, in fact, just a little bit about my story. I got my electric car first, um, didn't get it for the sustainability reasons or, the, or, or any of those other reasons. I got it for the performance and the technology. Um, I did actually lose my previous car in a climate event. We had a massive power store. We lost 10,000 cars in our, in our area. And, uh, and so, yeah, so I lost that car and, and got a new one. And uh, yeah, got, got an electric car. And, all, and I then went, well, a lot of people with electric cars have solar panels. So I looked into solar and I went and did crunch the numbers and all that sort of stuff. And I went, oh, I should have done that 10 years ago. This is fantastic. So if you haven't done it, have a look at the numbers, do some crunching. And, uh, and yeah, and, and no doubt that, that sort of price differential um, is, uh, does make it quite compelling. And in fact, Australian rooftop solar is so cheap that if we even had a magic power plant so over here on the left hand side, that could generate electricity for zero cents. So, so this magic power plant that doesn't cost anything to run, um, it actually costs you 10 cents a kilowatt hour to, trans, to transmit it. So the nearest power station here is a couple of, couple of kilometers away or so. So all those poles and wires and transmission co connections and things like that, the electricity company charges you 10 cents a kilowatt hour to transform, uh, to transport that electricity over, over that 100 kilometers and, and longer for other places, versus the three cents uh, for your rooftop solar. So again, even if you had this magical um, power station, it's still not going to um, meet, the, meet, the, meet the same price. And then the, 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 the situation, um, you start considering things like batteries, um, because obviously um, rooftop solar doesn't run all the time. Um, you can see a bit of a, a, bit of a dig up here um, for the grid electricity, that 28 cents a, 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 a kilowatt hour, um, the transmission costs, the distribution costs, all those other elements that I was talking about, that's why it costs you 28 cents. Um, in fact, rooftop solar, as we've been talking about, costs you about 3 cents a kilowatt hour. If you include a battery and you cycle your battery at about 50%, 50, 50%, 50 um, the battery plus your solar will generally cover your needs um, during the evening peak, potentially overnight as well. The average cost of that over its lifetime works out to be about 16 cents a kilowatt hour. So battery, obviously a very uh, expensive upfront capital cost, but over the life cycle of a battery, um, you're reducing their cost down to 16 cents. And then in the future, as battery prices fall, we anticipate that's going to hit around the 10 cents. So again, that's part of the, part of the equation, um, looking at batteries and, uh, and, and where we go. The other thing that we're going to start talking about, those four technologies that I, was, that I mentioned at the front, is that electric machines are much more efficient than fossil fuels. So it's much more efficient uh, than burning gas, it's much more efficient than burning petrol or burning diesel. And so we've got some figures and some charts here around those, uh, around those four technologies. So water heaters, um, I had a gas hot water heater in my house, um, as I mentioned, when I moved in and I had bottled gas. And so the gas hot water heater, um, 2,400 um, kilowatt hours of energy per year, an electric resistance heater, um, similar amounts of energy consumption, but obviously consuming electricity rather than burning fossil fuels. 
But then there's this new technology, or it's not that new, but it's becoming more in vogue, um, uh, calling it call, called an electric heat pump hot water. And, uh, and that's what I put into my, system, my house. I put in one of those electric heat pump systems, and my energy usage for my hot water, I have a 300 litre hot water tank, it's full every single day um, with, with hot water at 65 degrees. And, uh, and it's using almost no energy. And then I'll show you another chart later. Um, what does that translate to in terms of, of, of annual costs? So that's one thing to consider. If you've got a gas hot water system, or even if you've got an electric res resistance uh, hot water system, um, consider what a heat pump hot water system might be able to do for you, certainly in terms of the energy savings, and I'll talk about the costs in a little while. Similarly, in terms of heating your house, and uh, obviously that's uh, not that much of a challenge that we have up here in Noosa, um, but I do have a wood fire uh, wood fireplace in my place, um, and I, I, I do use my uh, my uh, my I, I have an electric heat pump for my for my heating. It's actually my air conditioning system can switch over to heating at, at night time. And again, you can see that the energy usage is is quite dramatic from wood to gas to electric to electric heat pump. And again, these are methods that you can save off and save a lot of energy. Uh, in terms of cooktops, and I mentioned that we um, just got our induction cooktop put into our household last, last month, I was on gas. And so you can see the, quite the differences um, in terms of uh, what, what a gas stove uses in terms of energy versus what an electric uh, cooktop uses. There's not much difference between the electric resistance and the, uh, and the induction cooktop. And in fact, what we've got here, and you can borrow this from the library, um, this, is a, this is an induction cooktop, and Gary's gonna come up and talk a little bit about, that, about it later. You can borrow this from the library, you can take it home, you just plug it into a standard PowerPoint. Um, you can test your pots, because um, there are some special pots that you need to use this, and, uh, and, and, and yeah, see how, see how it works. And the final technology, and obviously very large cost involved, is, uh, is your vehicles. And so this is sort of to drive uh, the average of sort of 12,000 kilometres a year. Um, the amount of energy you use, obviously the fossil fuels, the petrol and diesel at the top there. Um, I've, got a, I've got a Model 3 down the bottom, um, so I'm enjoying really low energy um, consumption, and then that translates to, to really low prices. And so on the rule of thumb is that electric uh, devices are generally four times more efficient than the um, than their gas or, or, or fuel, uh, fossil fuel counterparts. And so that then translates into, uh, into, into great savings, but also um, a, a, lot of, uh, a lot of bits and pieces. So any questions? Um, I might just pause there. If anybody does have any questions, like to stick their hand up. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, you talked me into a heat pump yeah. um, as opposed to um, off peak electricity for water. Yeah. Um, and. Um, Adding the noise factor with the heat pump. Yep. Talk me into it. Tell me, tell me why I went for it. Oh, okay. Tell me why I went for the. I'm interested too. This is for your hot water. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 yeah. So, as I said, obviously massive energy savings. But I'll, uh, I'll get you down to the next one. Mark, in that in that question, can you also just touch on that off-peak part as well? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is the lifetime running costs, and, and I can testament to this because I've, I've actually got a lot of statistics on my household. And, uh, and so going from a gas instant hot water system, $3,600 a year, this is for an uh, average household of four, I think, um, down to the electric heat pump using solar is, is $400. So, so automatically, there's, there's a massive cost savings. Is that with the off-peak built-in, that resistance using a oh, heat pump, oh, you haven't even got one on there, you haven't got an electric one. No, 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 so we've got electric heat pump using the grid, and we've got, a, we've got a, a electric resistance using solar. But, but as you can see there, the cost, the cost between using, using solar and using the grid um, is, um, sorry, the difference in cost between using a heat pump and using solar is, is sort of three or four times, and so, if you're using um, an electric resistance system, is that what you've got? Yes, yeah, off peak. Yeah, off peak. It's on in the morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah, can't see yeah. the figures there for that. Yeah, no, no. So unfortunately, I didn't quite have that use oh, case. Yeah, yeah. But I, I would suggest, as you can see here, the difference between these two is about a factor of three. Yeah. So, so the heat pump using the grid um, and off peak is probably a factor of three. So you're probably up similar, similar to the three thousand dollars a year. 
Um, I'm not sure what you what you. Uh, what no, it doesn't come out. <laughs> no, that's, that's a question. A question that might answer that. When you get a like these new Ruby heat pumps, can you tap them into off-peak power? Yes, you can. Yeah, 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 mm. yeah, yeah. Mm. So you can tap them into off-peak power, or you or you can tap them into into your solar power. So so do you have the solar or? Yeah, I have solar. Yeah, yeah I have batteries yeah. and everything, but it's just for the hot water heater. I looked at both and I couldn't justify the heat pump over the off-peak in a small hot water heater for two people. I couldn't. So what when you say a little tank, what do you mean by size wise for that? How many litres? 140 I think it is. Oh, okay, right. It's only about this tall. Because I'm really interested in this as well, because I've got a 20 year old uh, hot water system, which I think is gonna go any time soon. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I wanna do my research. What what was the what was the question about noise? I yeah, so, 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 so the heat pump. Sorry, sorry, don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, are they noisy? So, so I can talk about noise. Yeah, go cool. so, so basically, the way a heat pump hot water system works, it's yes. like an air conditioning system. Right. So, oh, so right. you know, with an air conditioner, you've got a yes. fan, you've got a fan yes. and a compressor. Yes. Yes. Your heat pump hot water system will generally have a fan and compressor. Or right. It does okay. have a fan and compressor associated with it. So the noise um, that you get out of a heat pump hot water system is comparable to the noise that you right. may have with okay. an air conditioning and, system. And sorry. Really ignorant question. No, Do no, they no. live outside the same as. Yes, yes yeah, absolutely. Yeah, 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 don't, yeah, don't, yeah. Please don't tell me they come no, outside. No, 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 no. So, 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 so it's still, the, the, be the, where, the, where the, it is the, now. The, right. the, the compressor needs to be outside. Yes. The water tank yes. associated with the compressor yes. can sit next to the compressor outside right. or you can put it inside. Okay, so right. so you, okay. can, you can have the water tank in either, yeah. in either location. Okay, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Now just, sorry, just to this gentleman's yeah. question. So there's no doubt that economies of scale, um, I have a full person household and a full person household and a 300 litre water tank yes. um, does accelerate the advantages and the benefits. When you start getting down to one person, two people homes, this is where you start, it starts getting a little bit, a little bit marginal. You'll still consume less energy and it will still be cheaper, but is it cheap enough to justify the cost of, uh, of, of going out and, and purchasing, um, purchasing that technology? Can I make just one comment yeah, here? Yeah. Is anyone able to speak to the deal that the state government's got on at oh, the that's, moment? That's, you were reading my mind. That's exactly where I was going to go to. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so, so, yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so the Queensland state government currently yes. do have um, okay. some grants available yes. for people who are upgrading their systems yes. from, from either gas or resistant electric to move them on to uh, move yeah. them on to um, uh, heat pump technology yeah. or yeah. more energy efficient technology, and so that can be one way that you can overcome the uh, the, the upfront capital costs yes. because the running costs are going to be lower over time. Now, why is the Queensland government doing this? Because they're trying to shape, shift, and shape the demand of yeah. the grid. Yeah. And the final question around off peak, um, just going back to the gentleman's earlier question. Is off peak can be relatively cheap. I'm not sure what your prices are, but they're down maybe 10, 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Still not as cheap as that solar power. Um, and the possibly part of the challenge with off peak is you're still then utilising the fossil fuel generation from the uh, from the overnight um, um, power supply. So yeah. that's part of, the, part of the challenge there. Yeah. Okay, I've got I've got another. Can question. I just add to that? Yeah. yeah. Um, we've had a heat pump for 20 years. Wow. And it has absolutely been <coughs> brilliant. Um, it sits outside our, our bedroom. Um, so, I mean, you notice the noise, but it's a bit like a fridge. It's sort yeah. of like it just disappears into the background yeah. after yeah. a while. Yeah. And um, it used to be on off-peak. When we put on our solar system about 10 years ago, we actually changed it so that it actually goes and gets heated using our solar system. Right. It's rather than off-peak. Yes. So I just couldn't... Good. Um, recommend heat pumps more highly. They have been absolutely fantastic. Yeah, Mark, we've had, we've had the same experience for about six years and, <coughs> and with the solar. And I was worried about it because I'm geared to the solar in the daytime, actually. Yeah. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. it's a pretty big tech. And it sits there all night. What's it going to be like having a nice shower at 6 o'clock in the morning? But it's fantastic. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's absolutely remarkable. No, of course, that's a battery in itself. It's sitting there. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, I, I swear by it. Same in Manning. And, in fact, the amount of energy you can store in a 300 litre hot water tank, which is typical for a family of four, yeah. is actually the same amount of energy as you store in a Tesla Powerwall. It's about 10 kilowatt hours of energy. So, so a Tesla Powerwall will cost you $15,000, $16,000. 
a heat pump hot water system, $2,000, $4,000. So if you're thinking about batteries, think about a heat pump and a, and a water cylinder as a, as a sort of a thermal battery. Um, the beauty though is this, this 4 to 1 ratio is you only need to fill it with a quarter of the energy um, because of, because of the, 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 the wonders of uh, thermodynamics. Mm. That thing you've got there with the resistance using solar, is yeah. that when it's being heated during the day only? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and it's yeah, still yeah. costing fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because don't don't forget, if you're using your solar, and, and so a resistant heat, a resistant hot water system uses about ten kilowatt hours of, of um, power per day. You've got a sort of a standard five kilowatt hour, um, the five kilowatt solar system. That resistive hot water system will use about half of the energy you generate from your from your from your solar system. Mm -hmm. Now you could be using that energy for other things. And or you could be selling that energy back to the grid. So that's that's part of the reason why our price um, still using solar is, oh, okay. is, is so, so that's much kind of five point five. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think yeah. you've got um, thirty or forty or something. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I, 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 I find I, I've got eighteen kilowatts on my roof, yeah. and, and I still find I run out of run out of power. Um, oh, and uh, really? yeah, well, well, this, we, yeah, yeah, kind of, well, 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 kind of, because I've got I've, I've got I've got all the good the good systems. But I've also got access to really cheap power. I pay three, two cents a kilowatt hour through a wholesale retailer, and so I'm actually pulling, pulling down extra, extra power as well. So yeah, trying to, and the difference, just go back a slide. The difference um, in energy use between the electric resistant heater and the, the heat pump hot water system um, if you then take that difference in electricity and you put that in your, in your electric vehicle, if you have one, that will let you drive 50, 70 kilometres a day, um, just in the energy savings from, from going from resistance to, to electric, so uh, to, to a heat pump. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of um, misinformation that we're going to have to do massive upgrades of the network, of the electricity network, and it's going to melt down if everybody's all electric, things are going to happen. But if you can get these sorts of savings from your, from your various uh, in-house systems, yeah. you can then take that difference in energy, put that in your electric car, and you can, you can as I said, drive 50, 60, 70 kilometers a day. Yeah, Derek? Um, I just thought uh, worth making a comment around the off-peak peak that you can comment on um, using solar power, which is great. But if you just do that alone, just move over to using peak power and put a timer on your hot water system to run through the day between 10 and 2 p.m., it will heat up with your solar power. And that'll, yeah. that'll cost you the amount of money that you get paid for your export of solar energy to yeah. the grid. Yeah. That's how much you'll be paying for that energy that you're heating the hot water with. So you get yeah. 10 cents, it's costing you 10 cents to heat your hot water. Yeah. So that, that's, the, yeah. that's a very cheap way of doing it. But when you're upgrading, you're saying you've yeah. got a very old hot water system, yeah. Yeah. get us a bigger tank. Because I've got that, 250 litres. That's fine if you've got two yeah, don't, yeah, don't go less you've than got that. two yeah, if you've got two people in the house, two fifty yep. is absolutely fine. Yep. But if you've got two people in the house and you're at 125 litres, yep. you probably will run out of hot water. Right. You get very close to running out of hot water right. with a 125 litre tank okay. with two people. Right. So you yep. want to have yep. the, the bigger tank. Yeah, and it's I'll not that up, expensive to go a little bit bigger yep. with your tank, that's yep. just a bigger battery. Yep. And you're not going to use any more hot water. You, by having a bigger tank, you don't use more. You just, you just don't run out. You just don't run out. Yeah, okay, you just right. you're not buying it from the grid. Yeah, you're using sure. your own solar energy because sure. you're heating it by day, storing yeah. it, yeah. and using it whenever you use your shower. Yeah, and my household is is typically a shower at night yeah. household, not in the morning. So <coughs> we would be benefiting from the water being heated during the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. yeah. Now, a couple of other things to talk about in consideration of hot water, and it's interesting because hot water generally isn't the sexy part of, of transformation. People love talking about the cars and their electric vehicles and the batteries, but it is really important because, because of this huge difference. Now, the other challenge that you have is, is that most people only think about their hot water when their hot water system breaks down once every five years, <laughs> once every ten years. And they ring, up, they ring up the plumber or whoever and they say, my hot water system's broken. Plumber comes out, looks at it, and says, Oh, we've well, got a gas hot water system. You need to get it up and running because you need to have your shower the next day. And so the plumber says, and, and he's generally a gas plumber, he says, Well, I'll just rip that out and throw in another gas system for you. 
And so I guess my appeal to you is have a bit of a think about it. And uh, you don't need to go out and change your hot water system today, but when your hot water system does fail in the next five or 10 years, think about these alternatives. And okay, you might be able to get a new gas hot water system in fitted very quickly and easily, um, but your operating costs are still going to be huge going on into the future, and similarly with your electric resistance. So when your hot water system does fail, um, think about which choice do I make which, uh, for the replacement device. Now it is a little bit more complex to put in a heat pump system than, than, a, than a gas hot water system. And so that does come with a bit of complexity. And again, the gas plumber doesn't really understand or know about electric heat pumps because that's not his trade or their trade. Um, so you may need to get in some specialist assistance. But what we're finding is, and this is part of what we're going to do with this rewiring Newsom project that Andy Nolan talked about jobs, so we want to start reskilling some of the trade space you know, in, 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 in Noosa so that they understand these other technologies. And so when, when you have a failure of your gas hot water system, they, they can give you a range of options. I actually had real difficulty finding someone in Noosa who couldn't supply yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah, have to search yeah, for a plumber. With, with, with a heat pump. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With well, a, well in fact, you don't want a plumber. You want a refrigeration guy, you want an electrician. Oh, so that's part of the challenge. I see. Yeah, so you yeah, don't go near the plumbers. Yeah, well, the plumbers are still, you need the plumber to disconnect the gas. So, yeah. No, but what about my hot, my existing uh, electric one that is, is it's, it's 20 years old. It's going to fail soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so, so, get, so a, get an electrician, someone who understands these different technologies, all right. and get them, to, get them to map it out for you. Okay, yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. Or you can just ask and ask who he used. Yeah. He's done a little yeah, for you. Yeah, 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 okay, I'll ask him later. <laughs> okay, yeah, so there's currently grants for the. Yeah, 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 yeah that's what we're saying. So have to go from a resistance to a. Yeah. To a um, yes, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So if mine's 20 years old now, yeah, yeah, I yeah. shouldn't just sit there and think, oh, I might get a new. Well, 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 now, go now while the grant's yeah, there. Yeah, go now while the grant's there. And while I've still got hot yeah, water. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and that's the best thing you can do is if you, if you want to make this decision now, yeah. then you can you can manage it so that you don't yes. lose hot water and you don't have a crisis and you're not paying uh, uh, weekend yeah. rates for your, for your trading. Yeah. The other yeah. thing to note is that as of the 4th of uh, December, the, the grants would stop. For the December. Oh, yeah, no, that's the same. Today is the 20th of November. Oh, no. yeah. <laughs> it was a very short. What do you mean? I've got two weeks. Yeah, well, <laughs> so, well, we have been putting, we have been putting the grants out on social media. I didn't, so, I didn't, so, I didn't so know. I didn't know that yeah. was yeah. such a short time frame. It yeah. could change yeah. because there's a time next year. Oh, right. right. <laughs> yeah, it looks like I'm going then. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. space heating. So, so not so much of a challenge and an issue um, up here in Noosa um, with our fairly temperate climate, certainly down south. Um, but what, what a lot of folks don't realise is that electric heat pump, AC, using, using solar, um, that's actually your air conditioning system. And a lot of folks, um, especially down south, I've spoken to people in Melbourne, they've got a gas heating system and they've got an air conditioner. And they didn't realise that if you push the heat button on the air conditioner, it saves you 75% of your energy bill rather than using, using the gas system. So, yeah, so using your air conditioner, uh, putting it in heat mode um, can be really good. And again, the, the, the savings are, are quite fantastic. I'm not sure, does anybody have gas heating up here? In the, in the, so, no, no. Just the hot water and the, uh, and the cooking up here in, in the so. Um, so the electric cooking, um, lifetime running costs, again, you can see massive savings just by going electric, by going induction, by going this technology right here. Um, you can buy these as individual units. Um, I've got a Gucci one with a couple of, couple of hot plates on it so that uh, we, can, we can do Christmas dinner. And uh, yeah, massive, massive savings. And then finally, uh, electric cars. And, uh, and I don't know how many of you drive electric cars. Um, I've, I've, I got one, I drove down to Tasmania last summer for, for, for the summer holidays over three months. I drove 8,000 kilometres. It cost me $300 in electricity. Uh, it was just amazing. And um, yeah, it just typed into the computer. I said, I'm going to Tasmania. It said, stop here and charge for 10 minutes. Stop here and charge for 15 minutes. Stop here and charge for 30 minutes. It was, it was really good, it was really um, no, no problems, no hassles. Um, driving around town is fantastic. I'm sitting in the, in, the, uh, in the queue waiting to pick the kids up from school and there's no tail tail bike emissions. I'm not releasing carcinogenic um, fumes out to, my, out to the school children, my children and other people's children. So uh, the technology is amazing. 
Um, I can pretty much guarantee that my electric vehicle out there, might not appeal to this audience, but you never know, is probably the fastest car that's in the, in the car park. I've got an upspect uh, Tesla, and you, you put your foot down, and it's, 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 like a, it's like a rocket ship. If anybody would like to go for a drive after, happy, 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 to, happy to give you that experience. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, so it's cheaper, it's faster, it's more convenient, and it's better for your health. So there's a whole bunch of advantages. There are a couple of disadvantages, um, but just, just look at the price differences. It's just, it's just phenomenal. Just phenomenal how much you can save uh, by one running with a with a with That's a dollar fifty. That's a dollar fifty a litre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and that's, that's a dollar fifty a litre. Yeah. Where, where do you get that from? <laughs> 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 yeah, he doesn't get it anywhere. No way. Can we add to that? There's actually levies <laughs> now that support people buying EVs. That I think you you can probably talk people through that there's levies from the government. Yeah, so the state, the state government has a whole bunch of grants. In fact, I think now you can buy an entry-level EV for less than you can buy a Toyota Corolla. This is, this is new. This is around the $45,000 $1, mark. So the prices are just tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. And so there's government levies. Um, there's there's um, re reductions on registration in some jurisdictions, um, like the ACT, for example. They, they, they have sort of... The, the, the transit lanes, the electric vehicles can go on the transit lanes, so they're really trying to in, in, encourage, encourage the take up. Yeah. So that's sort of where I might leave it. I do have a few more slides, but I thought I'd, uh, I'd finish it up there.